All right. Welcome to a Thursday night chat with, uh, what do you think? <laughs> Something different to start with. Baby, I've been watching you. Watching everything you do. And I just can't help feeling someone else is stealing you away from me. I see it written in your eyes. You confirm it with your life. The web you weave could hold me Rather than you tell me Where you want to be Oh, you're slipping away from me Oh, you're slipping away from me And it's breaking me in two It's watching you Slipping away. I got a reason for playing that song to start off with. Um, first of all, we don't have sponsors on this show at the moment. I'd love to get a sponsor or two <laughs> so we can get some proper equipment and actually do these things properly. And uh, if you've got a business or something and you'd like to be a part of our little journey, please let me know. And we're not talking about millions of bucks here, but um, I'd love to do that. But in the meantime, the, spons the sponsors are really the things Tuffy and I are doing. And for me, I've got a show called The 70s Unplugged Show. We've just booked that show into the uh, Hotel Metropole at Ipswich on April the 13th. Tickets are only 20 bucks. You can get tickets at the um, Nick Phillips, uh, sorry, The 70s Unplugged Show Facebook page or message me through my Facebook page or just, you know, however you can get on to me, let me know. And I'll organise the tickets for you. Limited number of seats. They've got a great room upstairs at the venue. Uh, Shane and his family there run the place. It's really good. They love music. They're really good people. So April the 13th, I'm doing my 70s Unplugged show. And that song, the Max Merritt song, is part of my show. And I've got videos that go with it and stories. And it's just very unique. And I think it's a, the best acoustic show around this year. Also, Tuffy and I want to let you know that we're keen to do backyard house parties. Clubs are getting really crazy and venues are getting crazy. I mean, you've got to go in and pay 12, 15 bucks for a beer. It's just insane. We'd love to get out to your place, Sunday afternoons especially, get your friends together, bring your own drinks, bring your own food, get 40, 50, 60 friends together, chip in for the cost of what we do. You can get me solo, Tuffy solo, or us as a duo together, which is a bit more. And um, we'll put on that day in your backyard, but um, we're really keen to do that. The other, other reason I wanted to play that song is that um, on Good Friday, I'm going to be doing a selection of my songs from my 70s Unplugged show at one of Brisbane's or one of Queensland's great festivals, the Blue Water Festival at Shorncliffe. Good Friday. What are you going to do? Afternoon. If you're going to church in the morning, come to the festival in the afternoon. In the morning, the day starts with the start of the Brisbane to Gladstone Yacht Race. And the rest of the day is bands, music, great time, great family time. Some years there we've had over 10,000 people. But I wanted to talk about that event tonight. And to uh, the best place to talk to that is the guy who runs it, the guy called Bill Gollum. So I'm going to bring Bill into the, uh, the chat here. Hear me, mate? Nick, how are you, mate? I'm good, Billy. How are you doing? Good, mate. Just thought I'd do me tough imitation so the crowd won't <laughs> worried about you not being here. Yeah, is that him? Oh, mate. The other yeah. plug I've got to get in while you're doing Tuffy, <laughs> I'm playing at the Blue Water Festival on Friday. Now, on the Saturday, Saturday evening after the Blue Water Festival, Tuffy and I will be up at the full moon. So what a great day to follow up the Blue Water Festival is to come up the, and join him with hotel, Tuffy and I at the, the full hotel, moon. The full, no, no, the full moon hotel, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing the full moon, but well, we, we may do. But the full moon hotel, Tuffy and, I, Tuffy and I will be there the day after Good Friday. So coming up there. And Billy, you're geared up for um, Good Friday, I hope, for our game of a great day. But we've been friends now for, I don't know, seven, eight years or so, whatever. And yeah, Nick. Through music. Yeah. And I lived yeah. in the, the 4017 area um, for about 15 years now. With me, you're almost a local. 
Ah, Almost we're living at Margate that. these days. We moved to we're at Margate four hundred one nine, but um, mm. we did do a um, uh, uh, had, you know we were kids went through um, Sean Cliff Primary School and all that stuff. But mate, you've been there all your life, right? Like generations, mate. Third generation. Um, yeah, my oh, grandfather. Gee. My grandfather was one of four brothers, and he moved here. I think back in after the World War Two, and he became a racehorse trainer in the area for many years. Trained quite a few successful racehorses. A um, little small anecdote there. My my grandmother was this little old lady that, that was, was sort of wooden butter wouldn't melt in the mouth. She was about four foot nothing, and um, I only found out about twelve months ago that she used to do a bit of SP booking on the side on the veranda on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Explains a lot, yeah. mate. Explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. And yeah, from there, my, my grandfather and my father had the, used to have the old. Uh, Caltex service station at, at Deegan there for many years and they tell some wow. great stories in those days service stations weren't allowed open 24 hours a day they're only allowed open five and a half days a week and they have to close so but, which was the Caltex one where they are now which were those ones uh, where, where, the, where the Woolworths garage there is a Deegan there uh, yeah the, the one behind Caltex. Woolies okay great right. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Near, um, so, the Deegan there, near the creek near the bridge at the yeah, 7-Eleven one the 7-Eleven now is it 7 Eleven now? No, 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 Woolies. That's still a Woolies. No, right on, on Braun Street, it's Braun Street, Seagate Road there. Up, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they had that there for many years, my grandfather and my father. And uh, and uh, they, they sort of sort of morphed from that into uh, having the, the car dealership there for many years. And and uh, we were there for 55 years. At one stage, we were Queensland's oldest used car dealership. The only older dealership in the motor industry in the, in the state was a a country new car dealer, so it was pretty cool. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, which literally sold cars to generations of people, which is quite amazing. Some great life stories. I mean, going back to the days when I was a young fella, my my dad used to sell cars and you know, help people out with struggling at the time. And, uh, yeah. and I've got a receipt somewhere laying around the place where he sold a um, a car and the trade in was a was a Ute and uh, three chickens. So yeah, that, that was part of, <laughs> part of the days and uh, helping out and. But he uh, met a lot of great people and you know, it left a great legacy to the area. A lot of people knew my father, my grandfather before me. Obviously, for the racing industry, he was very popular. Mm. Um, and, I'm, I'm, yeah. I imagine the whole used car thing is real science to it, right? There must be a real um, strategy to how you keep your head above water and, and make the right choices in that whole process. And, and Yeah, yeah. look, it, 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 it was an amazing industry. Uh, I learned a lot in it. Um, I did have a bit of a few years after I left school and back background in, in the finance industry and uh right. I did, yeah did the old Aussie tour around Europe for, for twelve months in the back of a combi van, but uh hmm. came back into the in, into the real world and got involved in the family business, which I swore I'd never get involved in. And yeah, and, and, <laughs> as, and you um, as you do, as you do, and uh Many a times spent arguing with my father or the, or the, about who was right and who was wrong, and yeah, you, know, you can yeah. probably imagine uh, small business people have all got uh, very large egos, and um, there was two big bulls in the in the, in the one K out there for quite a while. But mm. uh, uh, he was a good man. He he was uh, very loyal. He uh, was, didn't have much of a filter. My father, he, he really didn't care. Um, who he offended if he was, but he didn't deliberately offend people. It was just that he, he blurted stuff out. Yeah. Talking about yeah. music, his great song was um, Run Around Sue. And uh, <laughs> I, I remember um, he'd have it, he'd, all my mates, he'd, 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 he'd come, when they'd come over around those early days, he'd have a couple of beers and he'd talk to them and say, Well, you know, what's the story? What's the story? You know, because at the start of Run Around Sue, here's my story. It's sad but true. So dad mm. would sing that song and he'd love it. and and uh, yeah, some great times and memories. It was, a, it wasn't just a a, 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 a a work. It was actually a lifestyle. because I grew up on the premises. There it was twenty four seven with mum and dad. So it was a real yeah. typical small business background. I mean, back in the eighties and nineties, you know, it was a much smaller world back then. And I grew up in Wilston, the Grange, that sort of inner yeah. city area there. And I oh, went to yeah. Wilston Primary. <laughs> I went to Kedron High School. Yeah. And mate, we were we were terrified back then to come out Sandgate way because you had the Boondle boys and the Sandgate boys, and there's all this vibe about this stuff going on. So were, yeah, were mate, you one of the were you one of the Sandgate boys, mate? No, I was one of the Deegan Grammar boys, mate. You're like, you know, oh, like, okay. yeah, okay, yeah. for the for the locals are not on, you know, Sandgate high schools to all the old people like ourselves, and there's always <laughs> been known as Deegan Grammar, you know, okay, right. Deegan, even that Sandgate high. But yeah, there were some pretty wild days. I had some 
good mates who were part of those little yeah. gangs. And I remember them getting on trains and going into the city for gang fights. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's some crazy guys. I still think some yeah. of them every now and then. And I uh, wonder how some yeah. of them are still alive, to be quite honest with you. Tex, Tex Perkins came from out there, didn't he? Tex Perkins, yeah. We had some great people come from from Sangate. Yeah. Tex Perkins went to Sangate High. We, um, uh, Kerry and Kennelly, obviously, is, is one more of the well known ones. Uh, All right, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, she went to Sangate High. Uh, I know my dad used to go to uh, Shawncliffe State School because when he was a young fella, he um, used to ride his horse to school. And there was a, an act, famous Australian actor by the name of Frank Stanton, and uh, nah, probably nice. for the younger the audience. Frank Stanton, yeah. um, he uh, he he was uh, started as Malcolm Fraser in the, in the miniseries The Dismissal yeah. many years ago, and he actually grew yeah, up. Great with, actor. Uh, Great actor, yeah. he was a good actor. Had the real yeah. deep oh, yeah. Australian yeah. voice. Yeah. Um, well, so, mate, about about 17, 16, 17 years ago now, when Anne said we're going to move out to Sandgate Way, and I just got yeah. to follow wherever we went. You know, I, I thought, really, you sure about that? And then we started doing regular visits out here, and yeah. it's like, hang on, this is like paradise. <laughs> this is like, yeah, well, uh, why, why haven't I been out here for the last you know forty years? It's like. Um, Amazing, and so we got to love the place. The kids, kids grew up in the area, and a big part of that was the community vibe. You'd go down to the square on the on um on Anzac Day. The whole community would come down yeah, there. Always, yeah, always. And you'd have the different events happening around the place, and you'd do the Blue Water Festival. And mate, so much. I'm not pissing in your pocket here. So much was driven by the chamber and what you've been doing. Now I know. Yeah. When you run community events, mate, you're in a really hard spot and you know, half the people love you, half hate you, because it's like you're trying to keep everyone happy while you put on events and you can't do that. Um, well, but mate, I, I, I don't I know who loves me and who hates me. <laughs> well, well, I love you, Bill, so that's all right. Good <laughs> <laughs> mate, but I, yeah, I, I think it's easy when you're putting on a professional event. If you've got funds to put on a major festival, you sack, yeah. you employ, you do whatever you have to do. When you're putting on community events, you've got to please everybody. You've got to please the local stallholders through to, you know, the, the pensioner groups, through to the schools, through to the politicians, everything else. Yeah. And you're, yeah. you're juggling all these balls in the air. And mate, from what I've seen, personally, you've done a great job with all that stuff. Um, Thanks, and I, I'd like to give you a chance, mate, just talk about the challenges of doing that because it's, um, you, know, you, you, you cop a lot of people who love what you're doing, a lot of people who give you flack for what you do, but I think... Now's the time to actually you know, talk a bit about your experience in, in running these things. Oh, look, Nick, it, it does get you down sometimes when people want to throw rocks, but, you know, it, it really doesn't make any difference because at the end of the day, what really makes a difference is uh, seeing the kids, you know, with their eyes, eyes light up. And, and over the last few years, even the adults, what we do down there every day time, we, we transformed the Blue Water Festival a few years ago. It was dying. In fact, we were in yeah. danger of l losing the uh, start of the Brisbane Gladstone Yacht Race, yeah. which just started for Sean Cliff Pier for, for well, was it 75 years, a couple of years ago. We were in danger of losing the start to uh, to Redcliffe. Uh, so we actually sat down as a chamber. And, and it's not just me, the Chamber of Commerce. We have a really good mm. group of people behind us. Um, they come and go. And uh, but there's a there's a core group of people there that really really sit in behind and swing in behind them. And I'm the I'm the, the figurehead. They're the workers. Um, we've also got a guy working for us now, part time fellow, one of Chris here, which you would have met, um, who does a fabulous job behind the scenes and has turned around what we do. Um, so the Blue Water Festival, you're right, ten thousand. I think we've you know, estimated a couple of years ago there was about fourteen thousand down there. Um, we, we revolutionised the way it was put together. There was a lot of um, sort of substandard um, offerings down there at, at, at a stage. And I said, well, look, you know, if we're going to keep the Blue Water Festival, uh, we need to uh, up the ante. And we got people like you involved and, uh, and and some really good acts down there to sort of regenerate the festival. Uh, we brought back the cannon to start the, the boats from the pier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with, with, when we and because the big yachts now can't come close to the pier, we, we got the multi holes in from the start, and that's mm -hmm. brought a bit of a spectacle back. Uh, the fireworks, you know, we, we, we really made sure we put a great fireworks show on it. The bay fire of a night time there to the music is is fantastic. And, you know, you're right, from the storeholders, you know, we, we get storeholders who, who sort of think the world is, you know, is their centre, and uh, we get other people who, uh, you know, who, who just have have massive input and, and spend massive amounts of money down there who are just so easy to get on and it's vice versa. 
Um, and it's, it's a juggle. It's a juggle in a bit, but it is it is rewarding. I uh, I always try to make sure that I really sort of go bad out of hell through the middle of the day and really try to settle out in for the uh, the music later in the afternoon for the for the beach party. And as you know, I, I, that's a bit of an afternoon I enjoy. The other thing is, you know, Nick and I, I show Nick up for those people who don't know, and we get up and do a bit of a duet most years. And um, no, we're legends. We're legends. We're legends. Yeah, in our own lunchboxes. Um, so look, country, yeah, look, country roads has never been done better. What can I say? Right, never, mate. Never, never. I mean, yeah, we thought we would have rode it. Um, Although I think, look, I think, I think this year we should tackle toes. Toes in the water, yeah, mate. Yeah, they're a bit yeah, of, yeah, yeah. don't mind that, mate. A little I, bit of that. It's pretty it's, good. Yes. But yeah, but yeah. I mean, the Blue Water Festival, Nick, is is a community event. Um, yeah. It takes us a lot of money to put it on. Uh, I think yeah. their budget ran to put that on is around about eighty thousand dollars. And the big challenge is it's on Good Friday, so literally everything we get in is triple the price you would normally pay for it any other day of the year, except for Christmas yeah. Day, obviously. Um, so the costs and the expenses of putting that on. And then making sure that our, our storeholders and our food trucks and, and our, our, uh, those people who, who, who come along, uh, we try to give them as much bang for buck. We're not always successful at that, but we try our best. Obviously, getting crowds there is, some, is a very unknown quantity. Last year with the, with the storm, that, that hurt us. But look, <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't put it on without the help of the Brisbane City Council. Uh, we get, yep. we get uh, around about $30,000 a year out of them. Uh, uh, and if I can butt in there and say, look, a lot of people know that my friends know that I'm often critical of our pollies. I'm not going to throw you down that alley, but mm. mate, uh, I think this is a point to talk positively about how, you know, the pollies do put into this event and they do make it work and you have to, you manage that whole situation. So talk about that, but I do want to say Queensland rail, make sure the trains are working this year. Cause you keep <laughs> doing rail maintenance every time we put it on and people can't get out there by rail. Anyway, well, you talk the positive, I'll do the negative. Well, Nick, that, that is probably one of the biggest misconceptions about myself and the Chamber of Commerce. Look, I'm a volunteer and so are all my members uh, and so are all the executive of the Chamber of Commerce. We're volunteers. We, we, we do it for the community and the, and the local businesses. Um, and the Blue Water Festival is a community event. It's not for profit. The Chamber of Commerce is a not for profit organisation. Uh, so we don't have, have any sort of say anything. The other thing is the Chamber of Commerce as a community group uh, organization we don't have any say in the running of council or state government or federal government issues we can lobby them we can do yeah. what we can to, to support our businesses in our community but you know i can't pick up the phone to anyone and say fix this or do that or anything like that um some people think that's the case and maybe that's a that's a bit of a uh, double-edged sword for the chamber of commerce because people think we probably have more influence than sometimes we do um mm. But we, 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 but, 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 but the, the, the politicians do need to realise that everyone who turns up there are voters, and the more they put into it, the more we will consider voting for them. So just well, Nick, yeah, and you know something about the Blue Water Festival. I'm, I'm very passionate about the Blue Water Festival. It's Good Friday. You know, it's, it's a long weekend. Um, you know, we've had political parties of all persuasions come down, and they want to put up stalls and promote, you know, their, their candidates and their policies and that sort of stuff. And um, I'm just very adamant, you know, the Chamber of Commerce is apolitical. There are times when the Chamber of Commerce does have to be political to, to, to yep. push the causes of our businesses, and we don't apologise for that um, yep. and uh, and push the cause of the area. Um, but we do it without fear or favour. I say to all our local politicians, um, you know, I don't care what colour persuasion you are, if you're going to do the right thing by the area, we'll work with you, and we hope they work with us. Uh, yep. That sometimes it can be a difficulty. Uh, but, look, the, the, the Blue Water Festival is now, uh, it's gone from a, a festival that was really struggling. I think we should probably get about four or 5,000 people there to, as you said before, well over 10,000 every year for the last few years. Um, it is now, we, we, we get media there. I had a friend of mine who was in Darwin last year, uh, phoned me up. He saw me on TV in Darwin doing an interview with one of the local uh, TV stations. So the beauty of the Blue Water Festival is, firstly, it's a community event. But what it does, it puts our great little Sandgate area uh, on the stage and uh you know we it's not just the, the ten thousand people who come there we get a lot of media coverage i know that one of the uh big breakfast shows is coming down the morning they were there last year the abc breakfast oh, sure. show they're coming down on the thursday morning again uh this year to, hey. to broadcast loretta's there. a great mind of mine great i met i met loretta back at the two dozen breakfast show on the abc we met yeah. back when we were just out of school and i used to play at the 
the underground when it was the big boot, remember on top? Yes, remember that? And the big oh, boot's now in a digger, mate. How's that? It is a digger, mate. But the yeah. East Bit Milton, and I'd play there, and Loretta and a couple of my friends from school would turn up, and we met back in those days. And, um, mate, here she is, a really famous radio star these days. And, um, you know, she's coming back down to Shawncliffe, which is great. So that would be good to see her and uh, um, to her team doing the radio show down there. But, um, mate, I do have to say, there's been some hot, really big highlights of the Blue Water Festival, but two years ago, we mm -hmm. got hit. I think it was two years ago, maybe th uh, three. I can't remember, but we got hit by a mini cyclone today. That was about four years ago. That was it for the was first that one. Four years ago. Yeah. And you had, to pull the bit... you had to basically yeah. pull the stage down, but there was one artist who got up there with his guitar and a couple of speakers. We put the fallback speakers up and continued to entertain the people despite the fact that Cyclone Tracy had been through. And I thought well, the that, was that guy, that guy well, was brilliant. What can I say, mate? Well, well that, that artist, like you talk about Australian, <laughs> like, you know, knock it up with a bit of, bit of uh, tied up with a bit of wire. I mean, That's it, the mate. rain just kept pouring. We lost speakers. We lost amplifiers. <laughs> Nick Phillips. I'll play you anywhere. The sound, the sound just kept reducing. We were getting wetter. But look, the, the diehard, the reward was, Nick, look, the, the diehard people still stayed and listened. They enjoyed it. They they loved it. And it, it was Mate, fantastic. The people, the people who started away. drinking at home at breakfast, they, they stayed all the way through, which is great. You know, they didn't care. It's great, mate. And, and thank you very much for what you do. And you are a good supporter of what we do. Mate, I'm not doing that for fishing, mate. I'm just saying what an idiot I am, going, standing on the stage when electricity is kind of going off crazy. Well, it was quite funny. <laughs> like, back now, I mean, literally, speaker would go and then one amplifier would die. Then, you know, and then we were at one stage, we were getting. Uh, uh, leaf blowers and blowing them into the amplifier to dry them out. Remember that? It was quite funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was brilliant. But, mate, in a while, we've got a friend going to join us and we'll talk about the artists on the show this year. But mm -hmm. um, ha have you spoken to the weather gods? How are we looking this year? Well, Nixie, until last year, and we had the big one late in the evening, and uh, that one we're talking about, every Blue World Festival I've run, we've had fantastic weather. And uh, mm. It's something I don't like to talk about. It's probably a good one. <laughs> I don't want to jinx us. Um, but look, I'm um, I'm hoping that um, you know we've had a pretty crappy summer when it comes. We were just talking about this the other day. Uh, when it comes to weather, pretty well every nearly every second day it's rained over the summer. So let's hopefully we get a little bit of a drier winter this this time around and uh, autumn. I mean, um, so look, I, 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 I'm always optimistic about it. Uh, the, hmm. the beauty of the of the Blue Water Festival being on Good Friday, it's fairly close to a full moon, and usually around full moon times you get fairly good weather. Uh, hmm. And I think hopefully that'll that that will stay again this year. Um, but it, it's a bit of a yin and yang event being an outdoor event. I mean, last year we had to stop the event late in the afternoon and missed out on the fireworks. They'll be back this year, Bay Fire, um, big and bigger and better. Uh, and I think that you know some funny things happen down there, like. Uh, last a couple of years ago, I had a friend of mine, and you know who, who I'm talking about. Um, uh, starts with M. Uh, he was the uh, the Easter Bunny down there a few years ago, <laughs> and uh, Murray had had a certain few drinks the previous <laughs> night, and he put on the Easter Bunny outfit, and um, and it, it's very hot in the Easter Bunny outfit, and it was a very <laughs> hot day. And Murray got up on stage. And I thought Murray was going to not be with us for much longer. <laughs> and I looked over and I thought, this is going to be great. How am I going to explain this? The Easter Bunny's going to fall over, head over Apex, and knock it up in front of all these kids <laughs> on Good Friday. When he took his when he took his Easter Bunny head off, he was the most evil Easter Bunny I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the poor bugger. Murray. You're a legend, mate. You're an absolute legend. I can yeah, tell but you. he was good. Good um, man. Good man. Yeah, nice. Great fun. And, man, that's the thing about the whole thing. You know, we're on the day and we'll be doing stuff on the day and suddenly a speaker needs to be run down the end of the pier or this needs to be done or whatever or whatever. And so many people just jump on in and do stuff. And yeah. um, that's the community vibe. And and it's at the end of the day, it's a really good festival, I have to say. it's it's I think it's top-line event. Well, I mean... And that, Nick, you, you hit a really good point there. Look, that's a, one of the things which we, I think we do very, very well. I can tell you nothing ever goes smooth at a Blue Water Festival. Um, <laughs> no. I'll use your entertainment analogy. There's a lot happens behind the curtain. And, um, you know, uh, uh, it really, really has a lot of you know, twists and bumps throughout the day, which we... Which mate, there, there, mate, there is always some part of the day where yeah. 
behind the scenes you don't see it but a few yeah. of us will say we've got this issue we need to sort it out don't tell bill because he's looking like he's about to blow his heart attack thing like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell bill. thank you guys um, thanks very much <laughs> <laughs> we, we sort things out but that's like any event in any gig you put on there's always those moments which are really really cool oh and, great um, man when you look at man, you know, <laughs> the other events we do nick i mean you know they're they're, they're Giddy up and though. christmas yeah. yeah exactly yeah i mean man, I, I, I think I it's the best region. It's the best region in Queensland, I think, for community spirit. So well done, mate. Well, it, it is, and you know the Blue the Blue Water Festival is down at Sean Cliff. It showcases our beautiful Sean Cliff Pier. Uh, the other the other events we do, and look, uh, some people get a little bit critical about what we do with events from the area, but there isn't enough um, promotion of our area. We don't believe from any level of government to get people here. Um, yeah. Our businesses are struggling. Uh, and we need to get, you know, literally bums on seats and uh, through businesses' doors to spend money. And uh, how we come up with the idea of running these other events over the period of time was um, a good friend of mine, his name Alan Bolton, he used to be the mayor of Redcliffe many years ago, and he suggested that, you know, if you run an event, you might get 10,000 people there or you might get 1,000 people there. And out of those 1,000 people, if only 10 people come on the day that have never been to the area before, um, five of them might come back another time. You now they go, wow, this is a cool area. As you just said before, you, you decide to live here. And that's the that, that's where we come from. It, it becomes a, a bit of a, a game of numbers uh, where yeah. people decide to come back again and again and again. Like the, the long table dinner, and uh, I'll give you a bit of a trade secret how we come up with quite a few of our events at the Chamber of Commerce uh, with our, our hardworking executive. It's usually over a couple of beers. Um, yeah, the, the, the long table dinner we, we, we put on, and I remember the first year, I think it cost $180 a ticket, and people said that, you know, the pe people are not going to pay $180 a ticket to come to that. But now it's 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 grown, and it's it's now one of the must-do events in Brisbane. Last year we had people flying from New Zealand. Um, yeah. The year before we had people flying from Singapore to come to that event. So that, that's a really great way to showcase the area and it's a class event you know it's a top and it's the other end the blue water festival is about family and community the, mm -hmm. the the long table event is saying hey uh, us guys here in, in, in the sandgate area we can put on something pretty cool if we want to and uh Absolutely. that's happening there Absolutely. um i mean yeah, we, the chocolate the, the pier is just a, a brilliant piece of architecture to start with it's fantastic and, and but you know and don't, don't just don't, don't just you know, what our main street of sandgate i mean it could be much better than what it is if, if we got the polys to sort of start realising we need some better infrastructure down there. Um, but, you know, the the the, the Jingle or the Bay Festival, uh, you know, that used to be called Christmas in Sandgate, and over a couple of beers we just come up with the idea of Jingle or the Bay. And uh, and then I, 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 I sort of spruiked it to a few of the local businesses so that we're going to reinvent this, we're going to put a street parade on. And yeah. Before it was just a bit of a party in the in Einbumper Lagoon Park there and a few lights and a few stalls, but, you know, that didn't give any value to the local businesses, Nick. And we said, well, you know, if yeah. we're going to get some money from the state government or the council, I mean, from the council to put on a, an event, you know, surely the businesses need to get some some benefit out. That doesn't happen on the Blue Water because that's Good Friday. Most businesses are closed. Well, mate, um, but mate, I was, I was talking to some, I was talking to some people under the table, probably yeah. people you probably won't, won't know, but um, just to give you a heads up, mm. um, I love country music. And yep. um, my music edges on the country music thing, so I should be on the bill. Let me just put that out there. But um, oh, yeah, the, Giddy Up, get the, the, the Giddy Up Festival, yeah. the Giddy Up Festival, um, it would be an awesome idea. Some of these people are saying if we had like a tailgate party for the oh, Giddy Up yeah, Festival. I've heard that, Nick. I've You've heard again, that? Again, another, really? great, another great idea over a few beers. <laughs> a, a seedy bloke said it to you as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and look, you know, we've... It's just something that's popped up over the last week or something, or something we'll be working on, and hopefully we can. Uh, there, there might be something pretty cool about that uh, with Giddy Up and the Giddy Up Festival. Like you know, again, the idea come up over a couple of beers, and the name Giddy Up. The first time I said it to a few people, I said that's a ridiculous name. After saying a few times, it's stuck. And you know, the, the second year, last year, you know, it's getting bigger. This year, we believe it'll be probably right. even bigger. And, and I didn't realise until uh, a, a good friend of uh, both of ours said to me, he said, "Bill, you realise with the Giddy Up Festival." You've got something that's fairly unique for Brisbane. And I said, what do you mean? He said, if you look around, it's the only country music festival in the whole of Brisbane. Yeah. And so it's yeah. something that, 
you know, we could really build on them really well. Country, country music is going through the roof at the moment. There's so many it great is amazing. country artists. Yeah. My, my, um, my teenage boys, they all love country music. I mean, they, yeah. they're singing the words to a lot of yeah. you know, Luke Combs and all those, yeah. all those guys, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's so many of those great American Canadian, Canadian artists coming up. There's also a lot of great Australian artists here that don't get yeah. And it's these events that actually give a profile to those type of artists. So that's yeah. what I'm going to be out there supporting these type of things you put together because <coughs> it gives a platform for local artists to um, to get exposure. And, um, mate, back in the day, <coughs> if you go, went to the Reds games at Ballymore, the biggest mm -hmm. part of the night was having the tailgate party yeah, in the was, car park yeah. before the game. Yeah, and, and look, you know, you, you hit on something very, very important there, and I know that's something you were very passionate during the COVID area about. Area about. You know, we're a chamber of commerce, which means we support small business. Um, you know, small businesses aren't just shop fronts in the main street of Sandgate. Small businesses are. I'm a, I'm a sole trader. Are musicians. You're, yeah, you're, 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 you're a small business, you know, and yeah. it's got to be important that we, we support those people. Uh, along as even artists is something I, I'm, I, I believe in our local, you know, artists as far as painting artists and, and pottery artists and those sort of artists, not the musical artists. So that's something we, 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 we've got a really good culture in this area. You know, uh, you know your son's you know, starting to kick a goal in the area and there's um, you know, a couple of young local artists that we, we, we started off uh, at the Blue Water Festival with us many years ago. And now well, that's when you, when you... music. It's pretty cool when you think about it. When you talk about people who support local music and local artists, there's one guy who always comes to mind. And uh, he's, inv he's involved in Blue Water Festival and he runs a, a radio station at Redcliffe, Ridge FM. And, mate, nope. I don't, guys, I don't know how this I'm, – I'm, I'm using StreamYard for this thing and I've got some settings here. I'll try and figure out how we should be on the screen. But if I look big and you guys look small or vice versa, forgive me. But I'd like to welcome Big John – to the stage here, if I could, Billy, if that's all right. Yeah, giddy up, Big Johnny. Giddy up, how are you, boys? Big how John, you, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, good, good. What's doing? Now, you see Mark. Big John, you see his name there's Big John. John, mate, always screws me up when people put THs, As and Zs and Ws in their name. John Swartz. Yeah, John Swartz, that's the one, yeah. That's Swartz, okay. And that's why I know Big John is too hard. Hang on, boys. I just realised, realize, fellas, I'm the one who's got anyone who's got the formal name. You guys got Nick and Big John. What was I should have, I should have just been BG or something, or Big Bill or Little Bill or something. Oh, maybe well, you, you're Bill, just like Bill. You're, you're an important, you're an important official person, mate. So you can do your full name, Puppy Junior or something. <laughs> <laughs> Big Billy. Hey, John. Thanks for joining our chat, mate. Now, no um. I, I said to you before, and I'm, I meant this not to piss in your pocket, literally in our community from 4017 to 4019 on the peninsula where you run Bridge FM, you're a supportive community that's amazing and so many people in the region really respect what you do. And I'm, I'm so honoured to be able to call both Bill and yourself my friends, mate, because you guys kind of drive so many things in the community. But, buddy, yeah, Billy and I have been chatting about our background and everything, but yeah, how... Just tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, okay. Well, I grew up in Tasmania. Um, don't hold that against me. I do have the scars to prove. Yeah, um, we just took a downward turn there real quick, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love I, Tassie, mate. I love Tassie. <laughs> uh, got a bit of music in the blood and uh, started off as a drummer. Uh, I hear you have some, um, some brothers in your family that are doing reasonably well. Yeah, the Wolf Brothers. They're doing all right. Oh, uh, country yeah, band. Yeah, yeah they're, they're doing okay. They're, you know, they're, you know. Eleven yeah, guitars, you know, they're doing okay. Yeah. They're not talking <laughs> to yeah. We might let him we might give him a spot at the Blue Water. What do you think? <laughs> oh, mate, if you got them down there, I'll tell you they'll pack the house. Yeah, Billy, uh Bill, you just need to uh revisit your budget if you could on that one, mate. Yes, I think we'd have to. Yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine was looking at getting Kernigan and they wanted sixty five thousand dollars for Kernigan. That, that blows you off. You realise it was that expensive yeah, for Kernigan. Don't, don't get any ideas, that. Nick. Don't get any ideas, Nick. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Right, yeah, this, so, um, is, this is why yeah, I play I a lead organisation for you. Yeah, so I got into drumming and then in 1985 I walked into the local community radio station Hobart FM in Tasmania and did my work experience through for, you know, as a grade tenor and all that sort of stuff. Loved the place. Ended up doing Midnight to Dawns and then going to school straight after it. 
and fall yeah. on a sleep in class, as you do. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I continued doing that. Then I moved for, away from Hobart uh, in the early 90s and moved to the Gold Coast where I worked at CFM as the driving around the sea cruiser, giving out all the oh. Kenman candy and the who we can do all wow. that fun stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, did that for a while, but then uh, got offered to work in a nightclub. And I went, oh, okay, girls, free drinks. <laughs> would I rather be in a studio all day by myself or would I rather go out there and party? Well, guess which one I chose. Um, so I went and party. So, for 15, so Big years. John comes. Big John came from. Wasn't your party Big days John, in the club? Because I'm a big bloke. I'm six foot five. You know, hundred. Oh, I, okay. Years, so. it, it, it wasn't your party days in clubs. Okay, just checking that. No, no, no. I got, <laughs> they used to call me BJ back then, but now everyone. I don't like BJ anymore. I get a bit scared when say people say BJ because everyone thinks, oh, BJ, what? What? No, no. Just go with Big John. That's safe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so then uh, moved up, moved up to the Gold Coast, uh, DJ for about fifteen years at the Plough Inn and City Rollers and the Gig and all yeah. those sorts of places here in Brisbane. And um, then had a bit of a rest, and then uh, about oh, eight years ago, I got into ninety nine seven Bridge FM and been there ever since. Due to medical conditions, I can't work anymore, so I, I just donate my time to the community as much as I can, so I don't sit on my butt all day. Because uh, that's yeah. one thing I do not want to do. So I want to leave a legacy for my children. So and and and. You know, go out there and volunteer and do as much as we can for our community because uh, we have a wonderful community out there, mate. We do, John. Absolutely, Matt. John. I, I, we were talking earlier before we came on onto the stream about um, there's a big gap these days. Back in the 80s and 90s, so many Australian artists were very famous because they got on Countdown and all these local programs, and yeah. people go go see them at the Homestead or the Roxy and all that. You go see. You know, Sherbet or Dragon or ACDC at these venues. Yeah. The the world's changed. We don't have those media outlets now making Australian artists well known. So no one's going out to pay to see Aussie artists, but they will mm -hmm. pay, instead of paying 100 bucks to see a local artist, they're, they're paying like four grand to see Ed Sheeran or Taylor Swift. You know, it's a shift in the whole thing. We need to bridge that gap between... Australian artists and these international artists because yeah. there's so many great Australian artists. And I, yeah. I really think, I think the I, way to do that is between things like the Blue Water Festival and local events and community radio. We need to find a way to chip into that. And I'm hoping my little chat thing here plays a little role in the whole thing of it as well. But we have to fill that gap. And, mate, you've done a great job. You're always pioneering local artists on your show and what you do at the station. So thank you very much for that. And you're a big part of um, Blue Water Festival, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't do originals myself. I'm not an originals man. I'm a covers man. No. But um, uh, I'll leave that up to my uh, 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 well, um, Stop for a sec. Stop for a sec. Yep. Original and covers. Let me. This is something I'm going to approach in a few chats I have. Musicians play both original and covers. Some yes. people get to kick the big goal, and the record company gets behind them or whatever, and they they can just do originals. Most yep. artists get to play covers. Most a lot of people like myself. I've had seven, eight albums out, and I'll try and push my originals. But I've got to make my living by playing covers. It's yes. all about music is entertainment. It's about how do yeah. you take music to connect to people, bring them together, get them to have a good time. So I'm I'm really I'm really against this whole thing of separating original and cover stuff. It's all music. That's fair. That's fair. No, that's fair. I get that. I definitely get that, Nick. Um, look, so don't feel like you have to defend yourself for playing cover stuff. You know. No, no, no. Uh, the a lot of stuff got killed, as we know, with, with COVID and, and all that sort of stuff. And things are starting to come alive again. Like we're starting to see Pitnick Hill. Um, they're starting to do uh, uh, bands in the park at Scarborough every month now as well, where they get uh, all these bands to come down. So we're starting to see events starting to slowly come back. I mean, obviously, the, uh, the Sandgate Bayside Chamber of Commerce uh, with Giddy Up and a, a few of the other events that they do that get all the bands to come down to the local areas. So we're starting to slow there, but yeah, you're right. There is a gap there, and we need to. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, we're doing the best we can as a community radio station to get their their songs yeah. on the radio, whether it's a cover or a, or an original. But going live, they just stop paying for big bands anymore. Like uh, venues want one or two piece bands, and that's it. Like I got a six piece band, and it's hard to get bloody gigs when you're only got a six piece band. You know, like they don't, they don't yeah. want. We take up a lot of room, but we put out yeah. a good sound. But we could take up a lot of room to put out that sound. So, yeah. you know, they don't, and of course it's more expensive to have six people up there than two. So, yeah. you know, yeah. um, 
I'm I, I miss the days of the playroom down the Gold Coast. You're like you'd go <laughs> and see the Angels, you'd see the Radiators, you'd see you know three or four bands for seven bucks. You know, <laughs> and yeah, you know, we're talking some about some of the biggest bands in Australia. You know, so. Mate, you know, can I tell you? Can I, can I tell you? I'll share your playroom story, mate. We did a lot of gigs at the playroom. I had a band called Nicky Phillips and the Corporation, and um, I can't remember which lineup it was. I had because I had a few different lineups, but one night we played at the playroom. We were supporting the Divinals, oh, and I was wow. about I was about nineteen years old, and I can't remember how old Chrissy Amphlett was, but she was the most intimidating person I've ever met. Met at 19 years old in that back room. She just had this personality that was like full on. And as a 19 year old musician, musician who was pretty confident in himself, I just felt totally an alien, like just destroyed by Chrissy Amphlett's personality. She was really nice, but she was just so powerful and such a brilliant force. And and to a young guy, she was like this goddess. <laughs> And it was just so amazing. When you say, I, I remember when, that. When you say she's powerful, when she walked in the room, you could feel her presence. Is that what you meant? Like Absolutely, she, man. She, yeah. would, she, domin she dominated the room. And, um, yeah, she she was just this rock girl who, uh, um, yeah, we, 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 nothing, none of us ever hit on her or anything because we, we <laughs> couldn't. We were like scared little children. And she was really She'd nice. she you up like, and spit you awful. out, big fella. Absolutely, absolutely. But that was just her power and her persona. And then you watched her on stage. Oh, what a magician. Yeah. Oh, and what, mate, what a she presence could rule she the had. crowd, mate. She could rule the crowd, that woman. Mate, we've I lost her these days. She's gone. Yeah. yeah, well, I remember seeing the Divinals with a mate of mine at the Campbelltown RSL Club many years ago. We mm -hmm. ran in our early 20s in those days. And my ears rang for days after. <laughs> yeah. At that stage, it was the loudest band I think I'd ever heard in my life. But you're right, mate. They, yeah. they just rocked. Her, yeah, her, her presence was great. Well, the whole band presence was great. But, but she was a very, very powerful front person in, in the band. Yeah. yeah, no, she was, mate. You know, um, she did a few naughty things on those stages a few times. I tell you that that got room <laughs> yeah, around. Yeah. But she it's did amazing in her old school uniform. She was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Well, her, her and Angus, you know, Angus had the school uniform too, yeah. so across the sexes and it's all, it's all just smoke and mirrors. It's like putting on a show. It's like making people just feel good about what they're watching and getting out of reality and escaping to something that's a bit of a fantasy. And, you know, most people, you know, a lot of people think that people in the music game, when they act like this, they're, they're that weird. Most, most musicians... And this is a real, when I lived in Los Angeles and I did my first album over there at Cherokee Studios between 92 and 94, we were hanging out with people like Ice T and LL Cool J oh. and, and Spin Doctors and um, just these amazing people. When they're in the studio, everyone's just there doing their work. They're like normal people. Like we yep. had Rick James coming in pinching our beers and we also would bump into Gene Simmons who was – you know, producing Lita Ford's album wow. in the studio next to us. Wow. And it was just, but it, mate, they weren't, as, obviously I'd see them, I'd go, oh, but in, in this environment, they were just doing their gig. They're doing their job. So people see the stage persona, which is all smoke and mirrors. It's like, how do you put on a show? How do you make this work? But at the end of the day, these people are normal people doing their gig. And that's yeah. the brilliance of it, you know? Yep. And they're totally different when they're on stage to off stage. Like when you when I say that, they're on stage. They're like you said, it's a different persona. And well, the like worst one, stage, the worst one, like the worst people, the worst people to work with are the young artists coming up who've got an ego thing going on. If you yeah. get to work, I remember sharing a stage on Saturday. I was on Saturday Night Live once, and I was there sharing a dressing room with the Moody Blues. Oh yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. These guys were just awesomely normal. <laughs> they were just great guys. But if you got to share a stage with some artists who just broken, they were normally ego driven and yeah. still trying to prove themselves. So they were just impossible to work with. The so, dudes who it's been their life for a long time, it's just their life. Yeah. And that's yeah. a great thing about that, you know. So, so Nick and John, we, we, Nick, you just touched on it just before. You spoke about how the, the rise of, of, of country music over the last few years and how the, the younger generation now seem to be embracing it. And as I said, my, my, Older son's only 20 and all those guys, they, they love their country music. They also love their other types of music, so they're not just country music, two types mm. of music guys. Um, 
But, you know, where do you see, the, the, like, you guys, you know, you sort of involved more in this. Where do you see, kind of like, music is heading over the next couple of years? Like, we've just seen the, the Taylor Swift you know, juggernaut over the last couple of weeks and you couldn't pick up mm. anything or see anything without seeing Taylor Swift on. Um, I think I could probably name one song she sings. Um, not good luck to what she does. And that's show, the, talking about show business. But, um, but you know, there's... The, where are the, the next batch of artists with unique unique music besides country and western boys? Where do you see it going? Uh, I mean, mate, she's got some great songs, and and my yeah. son Beck bought Angie and I some tickets to go see Ed Sheeran, and I thought his show at Suncorp was the best concert I've ever seen. One guy yeah. up there holding sixty thousand people mesmerised by what he did was brilliant. Mm. Um, That's impressive. But, yeah, it was really impressive, and I think what's happening, and I don't know what this is going to look like. But we've had a, a couple of gen, t- couple of decades now where people have just been hit by individual songs. Like they'll stream things that comes hit them. They don't really know the artists. They just hear these songs that goes by them. When we were growing up, we all loved albums. We would buy, wait and buy that yeah. album. And you play that album over and over again until it was yeah. scratched. And you'd read the liner notes and you got to know who was playing or what was happening and all that stuff. And most there's, albums there's, actually told a story. The, the, the better albums actually did. told a story. They yeah. did. Now, there's a couple of generations now who've never experienced that. No. And I think I think we're going to f- come back to that because it's yeah. never happened before. So there's a hole in the market. It will be a new technology. It'll be something that works around the digital technology, but in an album form. It'll be something that the big companies can sell to sell new players or whatever else, but it'll be something where we actually get to physically hold something and not hear one song, but hear... 20 songs or 15 yeah. songs or 12 songs that'll take us on the journey. And it's just a, the cycle always happens. Like when, when people have always said music's dying, like when, it, when records first came in, they had the 75s. They said, oh, music's <laughs> going to die because no one want to hear musicians play anymore. And yeah. then you had, then you had like um, albums come out and then CDs happen and people say, oh, it's going to die and all this, this changes. But pe- there are more people today. There are more people today listening to music than ever before through the streaming yeah. services. And everything else. That's correct. They're consuming more music. What's missing is the delivery delivery of that music that gives people a new experience. And a, a lot of kids are bored with just hearing the streaming stuff because they know nothing about the artists. They know nothing about the songs. And once they experience, wow, I get to hear 12 songs of this person and see their story and see how it was recorded and all that. I think that's a new thing about to happen. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I, I just pray that's going to happen. And I, I, my gut yeah, well, tells I, me I think you're right there, Nick. And I, I don't know if you guys have seen it. There's a really great documentary about the night they made the, um, the We Are The World. Uh, yeah, the, oh, awesome yeah. documentary. And, and, how and that, how, and that, how, and that, how, how nervous good. did all those people look? When they were yeah. in the room without their minders, they had to be there yeah. as equals, and they were all—they're like, yeah. all like little school kids, yeah. like, "Oh, I'm feeling but, nervous because Bob Dylan's here." What, what, yeah. what impressed me the most about that, though, they all left the music awards straight after it, not going on the drink yeah. afterwards. They all yeah. went into the recording studio and recorded that that night and stayed Absolutely. there till six, seven o'clock the next day to do it. I that, that's that, it. That, 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 but, but, that was dedication. But I, but I, the documentary. Absolutely. The documentary told the story of where the song came from, which is yeah, yeah. Right up there I didn't even know, and was pretty amazing. And maybe that, maybe where things go, where and, and you know the, the, the kids who stay in age with their with their phones are very quick to change things when they're watching stuff. Is maybe it's a short story followed by the short song sort of scenario. Um, Absolutely, mate. Kids get crap get, get a lot of crap on them for because they're watching phones and all that. That's what they grew up with. I found yeah. with my kids and their network, they're really intelligent. And they're really, they're really willing to think about things. Yes. But they're working, we're working within the scope of the technology they have. When a new technology comes out, which gives them this new experience of music, I mm. think they will embrace that because that's where the cycle goes. It's always a cycle that goes around like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, you look at the last couple of years, vinyl has outsold CDs in the last three years. But, but so, John, the big point there is you, you go vinyl? buy vinyl, it's like $80 yeah. for a record. Like, yeah, they, I know. There's got to be something to replace that, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I get that. I mean, they're even saying cassettes are starting to come back in. I mean, I haven't, you know, I don't know yeah. about that one. But, but I've known. Eight tracks. Let's bring eight tracks. <laughs> <laughs> the real to real. Yes. <laughs> the old splicing. I love it. 
Sandman vans. Let's do that if it's rocking, don't right. be knocking. I'm down for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down for that. Oh, the, 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 the Sandgate boy talking up in there. Here we go. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, We've had some cool days here. With, yep. And yet, your father was a car dealer, mate. Used to get some good cars. <laughs> oh, now, awesome. for, for anyone who's watching this, I don't know how many people watch this thing on different platforms, but we seem to get a, a few hundred watching the whole thing across it. If you look at this little banner gun down the bottom, it says Blue Water Festival, Sean Cliff Pier, Good Friday. Nick performs at 4 p.m. So that's the most important part you need to remember is that I'm playing <laughs> at 4 p.m. on the main stage. But, John, your band's also playing, buddy. What are you playing on stage? Yeah, we're doing an hour of uh, Aussie rock. We're going to go up there and rock your bloody socks off for one hour of uh, hard-hitting Aussie rock. The Angels, you know, Radiators, uh, you know, Australia Crawl, just all the, all the good old hard rock, old pub rock songs, mate. We'll get up there and smash it for one hour. Not sure what time we're on yet. We haven't been given the time, but we're definitely Mate, going to you are, you are, hang on, I've got it up here. You are on at 2.55. There you go, 2.55. So we're to there 3.55. There you yeah, go. The schedule I yeah, the schedule I have is at eleven. So I'm your support act. <laughs> well, yeah, right, yeah, right. Uh, from eleven forty <laughs> to twelve, you got Dublin Rose. Now that's Dublin. From, the before, they're Nick, a great Dublin, little band. Well, Dub, Dublin was a young girl that started out at the Blue Water Festival uh, singing in the area for about I think she was about twelve when she first started up. She just wow. recorded the first first song and I think even album uh, just recently. So look. You know, talking about supporting local artists and getting people through and starting to come through, we gave Dublin a stage and, and, and a crowd yeah. to go. I mean, not saying you know, we were so responsible for it, but it's great to feel part of that little journey, you know, which is great to see. And it, and it helps build their confidence as well, getting on a big yeah. stage like that, you know? Absolutely. Um, because and look, they don't the get an opportunity to do that much these days. So The, the next two people I, I do have a bit to know about, from 12.10 to 12.45, you've got a bloke called Harry Phillips on. Oh, yeah, I don't know about him. He's a bit dodgy, yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. It oh, he, he's, he's good. His father's a bit of a jerk, but anyway. Yeah, his um, father's a bit, how are you doing? Yeah. From, 12 God, 50, <laughs> from 12 to from 12.55 to 1.35, you've got a girl, a gal called Angie Whiteley playing, which once okay. again, I, I won't comment on, but I, I can highly recommend it. It's a real family affair, this one, isn't it? Mate, I'm sorry to throw those two in. I don't know how that influence got. I didn't actually push for that. It's just the way it rolled out. From 145 to 245, you've got the Abba Girls. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm not, cool. I'm not sure what the Abba Girls are, but I imagine they're doing Abba songs, which is... Abba. You, Abba, you, you would hope so. From 255 to 355, you've got... What's this? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oh, they're, they're a dodgy band. Just, yeah, look, they're all right. Uh, mate, the, I've, heard heard the band's really, so, I've heard the band's really good, but it's just a front guy that's like a bit... Yeah, the front yeah, guy. Like, he takes up so much of the stage. He's such a big bloke. You don't see the band behind him. That's the problem. He's got a whole truck he has to sit in there. Yeah. Man, to do the whole thing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. from, now look from 4 40 to from 4 p.m to 4 40 you've got a selection of songs from the nick phillips 70s unplugged unplugged show unplugged unplugged show nice so yeah it's like what, what am i gonna say from so 4 nick, 50 to, nick what are you playing anyway what you've, you've got this new little show you, you want to yeah. take i'm doing part. a one-man show mate me and my guitar which is all I need to um, make my world happy. But I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I've put this show together called The 70s Unplugged Show. And okay. mate, the 70s for me were all school years. They were primary and high school years. And it was, my, I, I had a job out of school for six months, but then from now, from then till now for 40 plus years, I've always been a musician. But what influenced me to do that were my school years. And it was the music I heard through those times, people like James Taylor, Cat Stevens, Bob Seger, um, um, Bob Dylan, me like. um, me, all those. They were the people who influenced <laughs> my career decision moving forward. So I put this show together, which celebrates those songs. And a lot of people come out and see me. Um, that seems to tick a box with them where they love that, that music as well. So um, mate, uh, normally the show is a two-hour show. I'm doing a... Um, what a what am I doing? A 40 minute set here, which I'm, I'm scaling it back to a selection of those songs. But it's just songs that shaped my life and meant something to me. And I hope they mean something to other people. And I tell stories about the songs, the background of them, and all that stuff like that. So it's. um. You know what yeah. I'd like to see, Nick? I'd like to see no. you, your wife, and your son get up there and do a song together on the day. 
We can do that. We can do that. Um, I I'm actually doing lovely to see that. We're actually doing a show. There's a good friend of ours, Richie York, who was a journalist, a very famous jour music journalist. He actually, um, um, who got them? Where they come from? <laughs> well, yeah, Rich, Richie, Richie, yeah, <laughs> Richie was, um, <laughs> Richie was, um, he was the publicist, publicist for John for John Lennon. He wrote oh, the bio, the biography for um, the official biography for uh, Led Zeppelin for Van Morrison. He was the um, head of Rolling Stones in in Canada, and um, we're, we're, Richie died a few years ago, and we're having a memorial for him, a memorial gig, gig for him. And Ange, Harry, and I are uh, playing at that gig, so that's um, oh, maybe nice. we'll do one of those songs. One of the songs we're doing is a um, a remake of the um, Beatles song "Revolution." So maybe we'll we'll do that on the day. That could be cool. Anyway, from four fifty to five fifty, we have God Rock, uh, Rock Gods, and Mirror Balls. I don't know that that show. Okay. From six oh five to seven thirty, we have the Credence John Fogerty show, and I can tell you guys, it's that's like a good show, awesome show. <laughs> yeah, I know the boys in there. I know what they do. They've just come back from Tassie, from your land, mate. They did. And, yeah, um, they I, I believe they were using your dad's stage. Yes, they did. They played on my dad's stage, the Mildew Wolf Pavilion down there at the Longley International Hotel. Uh, it was named uh, it's actually now named Mildew and Lee Wolf because my uh, the, the stepmother, my stepmother passed away last year. Um, okay. so uh, so they've named it after both of them now. It's not just called the Mildew Wolf, it's called the Mildew and Lee Wolf Pavilion. So Okay. Which is lovely. Well, Creedence, so, yeah. Creedence and John Fogarty have to be just like, they're timeless, you know, some of the best oh. songs ever, the best performance. And these boys do it better than anyone else, so awesome. From 7.30, the, the fireworks kick off. So the they fireworks fight. happen. And when the fireworks finish, we have to control Billy because he normally does a nudie run along the beach and all that <laughs> stuff like that. And, it's a bad moon rising, boys. Bad moon rising, I always see this little white fella running across the beach naked. I wonder who is that? It's you. <laughs> so anyway, if if anyone who's watching this over the next few days um, gets to this far in the in the chat with us, I need to promote a few things. One, Tuffy and I are looking at doing individually or separately house party gigs at um, in awesome. your backyards on Sunday. So let That's us know. That's good. One thing I'm doing, I'm also, people who used to come out and see me play, if you have a favourite song I used to play for you, I'm happy to record that song with video and everything and do a special personalised version for that. There's a fee for that. It's not a big one, but I'm just, you know, trying to pay the bills, so well, you know, contact you know, me if you're on that. <laughs> um, I have my show, the 70s Unplugged show, happening at the Hotel Metropole at Ipswich on April the 13th. Go to the 70s Unplugged show or Nick Phillips page. You can link to it all that through, through that space and, uh, and um, grab a ticket. But most importantly, uh, we're talking about Good Friday and the Blue Water Festival. And it's been such an honour to have Billy and uh, John come on this and have a chat with me. And I'm, I'm, with this whole little podcast, it's yeah, I'm looking for a sponsor for it. If anyone wants to help me upgrade what we can do and we make it a bit better, that'd be awesome if you've got a small business that could do that. But ultimately, just want to talk about things local. You know, um, on Tuesday nights, I'm trying to talk about everything music. So whether it's an artist, an agent, a venue operator, just share your experience about Queensland music industry or Australian music industry. Or if you're overseas, if you can do this with us, um, the music industry in general, the, particularly the indie music industry. I'm not I'll really tell you what, I've got, big stuff. I've got a good one for you, mate. I'm going to get you Kevin Borridge to have a chat too. Mate, you Kevin, know, Kevin? I've... Uh, yeah, no, I don't was speaking. Kev, that would be awesome if you could do that, mate. Kev's like, how, how, yeah, you don't get more rootsy than Kev, mate. He's just like, his story is amazing. So if you could do that, brother, that'd be awesome. I also heard you were talking to Sim Dusty's son-in-law, was it? Or yeah, son? Sim Dusty's son last yeah, night. Yeah, David, yeah. David. So Nick, mate, Nick, I'd like to chat Nick, with David. Yeah, mate. Nick, what, what's going on with your chair, mate? You sound like Darth Vader. Just lean forward and back and <laughs> push for a second. Mate, I'm just, I'm just like kind of, I'm, I'm kind of evil and kind of force me with you. But mate, don't, don't talk to me. You've got some sails above your head that are some pretty big devil horns there going on. <laughs> I thought they were dunce caps. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's awesome. <laughs> mate, this is rough and ready. It's rough as guts. And I don't care. I don't, I don't want to do something where we're having an interview. I just want to get friends together to chat. Yeah. And, 
that's that's something we've lost in Australia, I think, to a big degree, is everyone's so precious about what they can talk about. Or, you know, with Billy, he puts on these events and there's a lot of things that go on with these events that he gets pressure from, from all areas. And people feel you can't talk about that. You might offend somebody. Well, screw that. Well, Let's Nick, talk it, about it, it. It, it. It's a great point. I just had a fellow call me this afternoon. He comes from, I don't know him very well, but I know the family reasonably well over the years, grew up in the area. And we had that exact same conversation. And that's something which... You know, the, the old saying gate is what we're trying to, but the, not the old saying gate, but the, the ways things happened in saying gate when I grew up, everyone knew everyone and everyone could have a chat with everyone. And I always yeah. remember my, my grandfather when he retired and went down the Gold Coast to live, uh, retired down the Gold Coast. He used to come up once a week and say good day to the family and that, but he'd drive down to saying gate and he'd spend half a day in saying gate, sit in the main street saying and talk to his old mates. Uh, because they all knew each other, and it was it was it was a really great thing, and that sort of disappeared. Um, you know, I think the advent of Facebook and you know, and, and social media, it, it's it's sort of taken away that sort of personal touch, and that's one mm, thing. Yeah, about the yeah. commerce president, I want to bring back. We want to, we want you should be able to walk into the local shop and saying and say, you know, Bobby, you going? And, you know, you know, you should know the, the local shopkeeper. It's a great yeah. thing that it's a great thing for the area. But when I lived in LA. Um, we had a friend from England, and actually mm. one of the jobs I, I had paying the bills while, while we were living there was polishing boats. He had a polishing boats uh, job um, business in Marina del Rey. Yeah. And Mark and I would be forever taking the piss out of each other. We'd just be like being you know, real pricks to each other in a fun way. And our American friends were like, oh, oh, how can you say that type of thing? How can you be like that? It's like that's what we do. I mean... I really love the guy. It's great. And we just kind of take the piss out of each other. Um, yeah, I don't a, want to lose that. No, it, it shouldn't be lost. And there's a really good, um, uh, I mean, he's not everyone's cup of tea. And I know he offends a lot of people, but I, the, the, the latest Ricky Gervais uh, stand up show on, on Nick, Nick on, on Netflix, not Nick, Nick Phillips, Netflix, very close to extending that. <laughs> really awesome. He tries, um, he tries to be yeah, like me. What can yeah, I say? yeah. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he, he actually touches on that particular issue, Nick, where, and that sort of uh, have a crack at everyone's humour come from the dark times and from the British Empire, particularly in the wars and that sort of stuff, where they made lot and fun of the dark times. And um, that's yeah. where that that blunt, you know, sense of humour came from. And I, and I think it's something, you know, that this uh, new uh, way of doing things, offending people, um, is, you know, is is dampening that. And that's and, and if it's we're not careful, that particular type of um humor and uh culture and it is a culture uh yeah. born of born born of fire literally um it's yeah, going well, to disappear mate, we've got some tough times ahead yeah recently mm. with the supreme court rulings here and stuff other rulings being mm. made politicians are going to have their feet held to the fire i believe and yep. when they do that things get you know people kick back and things get pretty rough and ready and mm. we can either say it's all too tough and depressing or we can have a joke about it and then go out and yeah. do the fight we need to fight. And yeah. the good thing I like about talking to you and John is we're, we're average dudes in our community just trying to do the best we can. Yeah. And I think the best we can do is actually pretty good. Yeah. So, Nick, if, what, what was, and I think probably where, where there's a, a blurring of the lines with this, oh, you're offending people, there's a difference between offending people and not showing respect to people, and I think that's sure. I think that's a real something that's been forgot. I mean, look, I mean, I, before you got on before John, we spoke about my dad. I mean, he he had very little filter, um, and he but he never never treated anyone with any disrespect. You know, he uh, he he said what he said when he said it, and uh, um, and he probably didn't care uh if it upset someone as long as it didn't disrespect them and i think that's really important and i and, and i know we're getting pretty soft in, in depth stuff here now then which we probably yeah, shouldn't be good, yeah um yeah, i think that's important that you know, we, we we maintain a sense of humor but we also make, re maintain our respect for people you know people just slagging off i mean i had someone attack me a few months ago saying well you're a public figure you could right have a go at you well that's just garbage you know mm -hmm. That's just garbage. And, 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 and this, I'm, I'm prepared to stand up and talk to someone and have a conversation with them. We have a different point of view on something. Let's respect that different point of view. Not because we have a different point of view that I'm that I'm a clown or you're a clown or you know you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, 
and that's where our where I think our, where we are at the moment. And need, that needs to that needs to we need to pull back from that sort of thing. You know, people mm-hmm. like ourselves, the regular people, need to make sure we we keep that sense of humour going. Um, yeah, and we need to. Huh? Absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, but thanks for the chat. Just let people know over the coming weeks. Um, I've got Mark Higgins from a, a band called Fat Pigs joining me on Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday oh, cool. May Mark's like a he's a fat pig, mate. I he's, a fat pig <laughs> he's great, yes. Mark's great. Yes. So we're gonna chat about his career and everything. Hopefully the Tuesday after that, I'm working hard to get well, Tuffy's gonna join me, but we're hoping we get to get a guy called Glenn Glenn Bibmead to talk with us and Glenn was like a real inspiration for me and what he did. Next Thursday I'm yet to find who I talk to but I'll find someone who I can um, um, you know, shake the ship with and see what we can do but brothers, thank you very much for having this chat with me. I hope you've enjoyed it all and whether yeah, fun, 10 yeah. people see us or a few hundred people see us or whatever or we take some things up and we use this for promo or what we're doing with the Blue Water Festival I just yeah, um, I appreciate you coming on and having a punt and um, yeah, good on you. Well, no, have, fun. Fun. Hey, have, I, have I missed anything you boys want to say? Uh, John, well, you go on first. The day, on the day we're going to uh, we're going to have the radio station there, so we'll get you on the radio station that day, of course. And Bill, uh, mm-hmm. people can. And you, 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 you get the other artists on as well, don't you? Interview. Yeah, of course, other mate. Artists, we so. get everybody on. We we invite everybody yeah. up to the stage, up, up to the station, and uh, come and have a chat to us about what they're going to do. We talk to the uh, Commodore and everything. So. Uh, awesome. I think Bill's going on Monday, I do believe, on um, on, on our morning yeah. show to start one of the promotions now of Blue Water and what uh, Sandgate Bayside Chamber of Commerce are doing. Um, so we, that's the start, the ball rolling, and then in a couple of weeks, I'm sure you'll be back and be talking to Georgia and all the rest of it. So, uh, but yeah, come and see us, and uh, we want to interview all the buskers and everyone that's down there. So uh, it's going to be a great day, starting on a Thursday this year instead of the the Friday, which is even better. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Hang on, explain that. It starts on the Thursday. Is that right, Bill? So, yeah. So, look, uh, I, I touched on it earlier on, Nick. So, over the, the Blue Water Festival used to start on Thursday many years ago. Yeah, I remember mean, yesterday, um, yeah. But we, we decided to condense it. Uh, but the rising costs of, of bumping in and bumping out, which is bringing all the infrastructure in on Good Friday, um, was literally uh, killing us um, as far as you know, our, our costs were going through the roof. So we decided that we would bump in all the food trucks So on the Thursday. So on the Thursday night, we've got Blue Water Festival light, for want of a better term. We've got some buskers coming down. Uh, we've got great food trucks on the beach down there. Hopefully it's a beautiful night with, with the moon and that sort of stuff. Bring your family down, bring a blankie down, um, bring an esky down, sit on the beach, listen to some buskers, get some food trucks in here, um, and it'll be a warm-up for the Blue Water Festival on Good Friday. But it's not just a good Friday, it's always a great Friday. Yeah, that's right, it is. You there, Nick? My, I am, just read. I just, mate, I'm, I'm a novice, novice at this stuff, and there's actually comments I can show and talk about. And one from Guy Ed says that um, his first car, RX2, was from there. Dad would not let me buy the fair lane, it was too quick, so I <laughs> snuck that one in. Does that make sense <laughs> to you, Billy? I <laughs> don't <laughs> Where's it, where are the comments coming up? They're on screen here or something. Uh, uh, no, I've got a thing here. I can see it, which I didn't yeah, I click on earlier too. because I'm oh, an idiot. Yeah. Where are the comments? Uh, from Ed Banks. No, not Ed Banks. Zach. No, Ed well, Banks. Zach said, Zach said um, when do they set up? Are they set up on Thursday. Would you say that? Yeah. Um, Ed says oh, there's cancel. There's a thing over here comments. Yeah, I see that now. What's, here's a comment from Ed. Um, Council requirements, increasing noise, monitoring, inspections. Blah, blah, blah. Zach says, um, who's performing this year? We've gone through that. Friend of mine, Bonnie, so, says thumbs up. So, Zach, your so, so, so to be clear, on, on the Thursday night, guys, we've got some local buskers and that's coming down on Thursday night. It's a little bit more low key. Um, it, it also saves us getting up very early on Good Friday morning. Love that. <laughs> yeah, so do I. So do I, Big John. You both love, love that. Because we know what it's like on that Friday morning, mate. It is absolute chaos. It's quite hectic, yeah. It, it, oh, look, yeah. Billy, uh, Billy that, that's a bit, That's you know, as a musician, I'm happy to get up at 11 a.m. and help you out on the Friday, mate. But okay. Oh, mate. But we can all sleep in a little bit more this Good Friday than we have in the last few years, which is going to be fabulous. <laughs> Not that I do anyway, because I don't sleep the night before. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but Thanks, no, mate. Look, 
Yeah. Gum. Oh, sorry, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Look, I've, I've, I've now I see all these little comments up here. So Ed Banks and Zach Ingram and that. Yeah. Hey guys, how you going? Thanks yeah. for listening to us. Um, Mate, I, as I said, I'm, I'm a novice at this stuff, and it's going to get better over the coming months. But um, um, guys, you can follow this whole thing on at the moment the Tuffy Nick page, the Nick Phillips page, or the What Do You Think YouTube page. I have set up a What Do You Think Facebook page. But apparently I can't stream to that until it's been up for a few weeks. So it's like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. But um, oh, mate, well, anyway. Well, this is a great initiative, Nick. It's a great initiative. And I think getting all the local people on, it, it gives another another sort of flavour to our local area, what you're doing. So, you know, yeah. mate, keep at it. Keep keep doing it. And right. let, let's, let's build it. Let's build it. And we're, we're willing to help you build this. Yeah. Thank you. Well, every Tuesday, Thursday. Anything, in, in a radio level, love to help, you know, get it out there. On, Maybe. On our well, we should do that up. interview from, from the studio. But every Tuesday, Thursday night, I'm going to do this live stream. Tuesdays are always going to be, a, be about the music industry. Thursday will be about whatever. And, um, yeah, see how we go, see what happens. No, good on you. Brothers, you thank you. Next. Thank you for joining me. And uh, we'll see everybody at the Blue Water Festival. And um, rock on, boys. You rock on. Can't wait. Mate. Happy <laughs> Easter, everybody. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> hey, Murray. Good on you, Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everyone, for listening to us. Thanks, guys. See you, guys. Bye. Have a good one. Thanks, John. See you, big John. See you, mate. All right.